Hey there, everyone. Welcome back. We are here doing the lessons of A Course in Miracles on this channel. And today we're going to be doing lesson number 75, The Light Has Come. And I'm on day 14 of my 21 day water fast. Cheers. Okay, so I'm in a different location this morning because along with this lesson, I did a meditation and had another Jesus spaceship experience, which I'll tell you about after we read through the lesson. So let's just jump right in. The light has come. The light has come. You are healed and you can heal. The light has come. You are saved and you can save. You are at peace and you bring peace with you wherever you go. Darkness and turmoil and death have disappeared. The light has come. Today we celebrate the happy ending to your long dream of disaster. There are no dark dreams now. The light has come. Today, the time of light begins for you and everyone. It is a new era in which a new world is born. The old one has left no trace upon it in its passing. Today we see a different world because the light has come. Our exercises for today will be happy ones in which we offer thanks for the passing of the old and the beginning of the new. No shadows from the past remain to darken our sight and hide the world forgiveness offers us. Today, we will accept the new world as we want to see. We will be given what we desire. We will see past, I'm sorry, we will see the light, the light has come. Our longer practice periods will be devoted to looking at the world that our forgiveness shows us. This is what we want to see and only this. Our single purpose makes our goal inevitable. Today, the real world rises before us in gladness to be seen at last. Sight is given us now that the light has come. We do not want to see the ego's shadow on the world today. We see the light and in it, we see heaven's reflection lie across the world. Begin the longer practice periods by telling yourself the glad tidings of your release. The light has come. I have forgiven the world. Dwell not upon the past today. Keep a completely open mind washed of all past ideas and clean of every concept you have made. You have forgiven the world today. You can look upon it now as if you never saw it before. You do not know yet what it looks like. You merely wait to have it shown to you. While you wait, repeat several times slowly and in complete patience, the light has come. I have forgiven the world. Realize that your forgiveness entitles you to vision. Understand that the Holy Spirit never fails to give the gift of sight to the forgiving. Believe he will not fail you now. You have forgiven the world. He will be with you as you watch and wait. He will, he will show you what true vision sees. A little kitty just visited me, sorry. It is his will and you have joined with him. Wait patiently for him. He will be there. The light has come. You have forgiven the world. Mm -hmm. Tell him you know you cannot fail because you trust in him and tell yourself you wait in certainty to look upon the world he promised you. From, the time, from this time forth, you will see differently. Today, the light has come and you will see the world that has been promised you since time began and in which is the end of time ensured. The shorter practice periods, too, will be joyful reminders of your release. Remind yourself every quarter of an hour or so that today is a time for special celebration. Give thanks for the mercy and the love of God. 
Rejoice in the power of forgiveness to heal your sight completely. Be confident that on this day there is a new beginning. Without the darkness of the past upon your eyes, you cannot fail to see today. And what you see will be so welcome that you will gladly extend today forever. Say then, the light has come, I have forgiven the world. Should you be tempted, say to anyone who seems to pull you back into darkness, the light has come, I have forgiven you. We dedicate this day to the serenity in which God would have you be. Keep it in your awareness of yourself and see it everywhere today as we celebrate the beginning of your vision and the sight of the real world, which has come to replace the unforgiven world you thought was real. Whew. The light has come. So this is lesson 75 and we're, it's like, you can you're healed and you can heal so everywhere we go from here is like nowhere but up right all right so when i did this meditation this morning i started to kind of drift into this like spacey sort of place and then all of a sudden i was looking around at these mountains that were like brownish yellowish color and the horizon had this like turquoise glow it was really beautiful but and, and really unique and i'm just kind of looking around and, and that's what i saw so i thought okay i'm on another planet and then i look over and there's jesus getting into a spaceship so it's like come with me sherry i'm like all right and so we're in the spaceship and Jesus is having a blast driving this thing. Like he's just happy, energized. And then he, as much as you can in a spaceship, he floors it. <laughs> and then the, the stars become lines, you know, like in Star Trek. And he's just like, woo, like he's just having the best time, you know, and, and like entertaining me, but enjoying himself. And then I notice we're going to Earth. I'm like, all right, here we go, back to Earth. And he brings me here to the location that I'm at right now, and I'll show you in a moment. Um, and when he's dropping me off, he's like, you're, and, and we're communicating telepathically. I don't remember hearing his voice, but he's like, you're meant to be here right now. And I was like a little girl, like with a, with a little backpack on like I was going to school and it just felt like like he was my dad or something and um and I just felt so loved and like I really am in the exact right place that I'm supposed to be right now going through this experience that is really hard um and yeah it's it's like it's like he's he's right here with me and so that's what I got out of it. Like, I, I don't know exactly what everyone else is going to experience or see. Um, I think that there's more to the, to the future world that we're creating together. But for now, my, my focus and my attention is supposed to be right here. And the fact that I saw myself as a little girl, um, it was like the the pureness of me or the the innocence of me is here and and the the vulnerability you know uh to be going through this process strips away so much of your false identities and your your habits and your just all the things that as an adult you can build up around yourself to prevent you from seeing and knowing your beauty your your light your innocence your truth and so i think that's what he was trying to show me today is like first of all that he's such a loving uh elder brother or father figure to us and he's 
living the, the best life ever. He's just so happy and he wants to share that energy with you. And he's supporting us wherever we are because that's exactly where we're meant to be doing exactly what we're meant to be doing because this planet is school. Like the fact that I had on the school bag, it was just a reminder to me that I've heard this before that earth is a school and in the Course in Miracles, it says the body is a learning device. So, so it's like all these things are being reinforced so much while I'm going through the fasting process. But this little girl getting off the spaceship to, to go to school, it's just, it's so reflective of, of exactly what I'm going through right now. And um, yeah, that, that we can embrace that child part of ourselves wherever we are and be excited about the day with our little backpack and you know, and I was kind of like running away from the spaceship, like, bye, Jesus, see you later, you know. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, let me let me just show you where he dropped me off. I'll carry the camera. So this is one of the little places where we can chill out in hammocks during the day. I was telling a friend yesterday, we're, we're like cats. We just we just lay around all day long and there, there's a big trampoline. We can't use that right now. But when we're done fasting, we can. So this this is the big area. It's it's almost like a spaceship landing pad. Uh, and up there, can't, it's up in the distance up there. That's where the pool is. And there's this big living room area where everybody sits all day. We have our lectures with Lauren in there. And um, where we meet with the doctor and everything. So it's kind of like the one-stop area right there up by the pool so yeah so it's like i got dropped off right here this morning and uh that was really cool <laughs> so anyway that is what i have going on i did i was reading a little bit of the text last night and um because i was thinking about guilt that whole thing about feeding my cat dry food and really wanting to wean him off of it because now that i understand how water works in the body I want my cat to be, uh, to have, to, for his body to be utilizing the water better instead of having to pull all the water to break down that dry food. I want his water in his body to be helping him, um, you know, service all of the organ systems and everywhere else in his body that's a higher priority that needs water besides the digestion of all the dry food. However, the dry food that I give him is like, top of the line it's made with like bones and organs and all this stuff but all the water is drawn out of it so the body has to use its own source of water to rehydrate whatever's dry like i used to be a big tortilla chip fan well they're made of like three percent water and when your poop comes out the poop is like i don't know 75 percent or more water so the body has to pull from its own water reserves to rehydrate whatever you're eating that isn't hydrating in order to pass it through the system. So the same thing is happening with the cat. And even though I, he is given like some wet food and anyway, I mean, it's, it doesn't matter because I've let go of that because guilt is the ego's playground. I'm not going there, but there is this like bodily function that I would love to have him optimized so that he could feel the best he possibly could in his little body. He's like eight years old and I want him to have a great life. So speaking of guilt, um, in the text, chapter 13, The Guiltless World, I was inspired to start reading that because I was on Facebook last night and I saw that Gary Renard and his wife are hosting this online workshop based on this chapter. And I thought, oh, well, if Gary Renard is going to be teaching about this, I'm going to go skim through this thing. So I came across a sentence that I thought was super profound. And it is in chapter 13, The Guiltless World, section 10, Release from Guilt, paragraph 6, the last sentence. This is awesome. The purpose of atonement is to dispel illusions, not to establish them as real and forgive them. So here again is how the ego wants us to make all of our problems so concrete and real. And then we have to work through everything and we think we have to unwind everything. Well, if the past isn't, doesn't exist and all the stuff that we're ruminating over is in the past, 
we should have the capacity to just wipe it away and not have to do all this work retroactively. So the atonement is that. The atonement, when we you know, get to that level of our consciousness evolution, essentially that we're at one with everything, we're in the now, we're not in the past, we're not in the future, and we, we see ourselves as what and who we truly are, all that stuff doesn't matter. So the mistakes that you've ever made, all, all the regrets, all the, you know, I wish I would have said this to that person. It's like, it's just extra baggage and it's keeping you from moving forward in your, your evolution. So I just love that. We don't want to establish things as real and then have to forgive them. It's just more work. So what I wanted to read you, and this was just because Jesus took me on the spaceship this morning. It's a paragraph on the, the next page. It's the same, same section, but section 13. Like you, my faith and my belief are centered on what I treasure. The difference is that I love only what God loves with me. And because of this, I treasure you beyond the value that you set on yourself, even unto the worth that God has placed upon you. I love all that he created and all my faith and my belief I offer unto it. My faith in you is as strong as all the love I give my father. And this is Jesus talking to us. My trust in you is without limit and without the fear that you will hear me not. I thank the Father for your loveliness and for the many gifts that you will let me offer to the kingdom in honor of its wholeness that is of God. So I feel like there again, Jesus is just trying to get us to hear him, that we need to have an awareness right now of who we are and start to at least acknowledge that all those things that we're holding onto from the past, we can let go of. You don't have a responsibility to make things right or, you know, it, like we, we just, it's the ego. It's, it's like maybe the, the lighter side of the ego, but it's still the ego that wants you to believe that you have work to do with your relationships or whatever. I mean, sure, you wanna have an open heart and love people, but you have no responsibility to go back in time and, and be there instead of being here. So we're loved, we're loved, we're cherished. He sees that child in all of us. And that is, that is what he wants us to see in ourselves. So I think I think that's enough for today. Um, I'm doing great. Nothing really new to update. Just going through the motions of being here and, and keeping a good attitude about everything. And uh, yeah, yesterday I drank the same amount of water I've been drinking the past few days, which is seven and a half liters, 15 of these pint glasses. And I still, even now, I still wake up in the morning thirsty. So to me, it's so unbelievable how dehydrated our bodies actually are. It takes so much water. Now I may always wake up and, and want a sip of water, but it's just interesting to feel thirst after drinking that much water. So I'm learning. The body is a very interesting thing and I'm appreciating it. I'm observing it as as a thing that contains its own intelligence and I'm I'm really being very patient instead of trying to force my will on it tell it what to do fix it because I think it's not competent or capable on its own so it's kind of a shift for me that's been going on lately and and I really like it I, I think it's good it actually puts less responsibility on me if I actually trust that the body can handle doing its own internal work and I can just go live my life and go go ride spaceships or whatever I'm supposed to be doing. So I hope you have a wonderful day out there. The light has come. Take that in today. And if there's any part of you that doesn't believe it, just know that that's the ego and it's there, but it doesn't have to run your life. I love you very much and I'll see you back here again tomorrow.